Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We look at stories through an irreverent and lighthearted lens in our discussion episodes, and our daily stories are a fun way to listen to the original versions in a short format that can fit into most people's schedules. If you prefer to listen to full chapters, you can subscribe to our Patreon page. We just added a $1 option that provides early access and more. You can check the show notes for our Linktree page, where there are links to all of our public pages, ways to contact us, and all of our content. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. How Little John Lived at the Sheriff's Part 1 Thus Little John entered into the sheriff's service and found the life he led there easy enough, for the sheriff made him his right-hand man and held him in great favor. He sat nigh the sheriff at meat, and he ran beside his horse when he went a-hunting, so that, what with hunting and hawking a little, and eating rich dishes and drinking good sack, and sleeping until late hours in the morning, he grew as fat as a stall-fed ox. Thus things floated easily along with the tide, until one day when the sheriff went a-hunting, there happened that which broke the smooth surface of things. This morning the sheriff and many of his men set forth to meet certain lords to go a-hunting. He looked all about him for his good man, Reynold Greenleaf, but not finding him he was vexed, for he wished to show Little John's skill to his noble friends. As for Little John, he lay abed, snoring lustily, till the sun was high in the heavens. At last he opened his eyes and looked about him, but did not move to arise. Brightly shone the sun in at the window, and all the air was sweet with the scent of woodbine that hung in the sprays about the wall without. For the cold winter was past, and spring was come again. And little John lay still, thinking how sweet was everything on this fair morn. Just then he heard, faint and far away, like a little pebble dropped into a glassy fountain. It broke all the smooth surface of his thoughts, until his whole soul was filled with disturbance. His spirit seemed to awaken from its sluggishness, and his memory brought back to him all the merry greenwood life, how the birds were singing blithely there this bright morning, and how his loved companions and friends were feasting and making merry, or perhaps talking of him with sober speech. For when he first entered the sheriff's service, he did so in jest. But the hearthstone was warm during the winter, and the fair was full, and so he abided, putting off from day to day his going back to Sherwood, until six long months had passed. But now he thought of his good master and of Will Stutely, whom he loved better than any one in all the world, and of young David Doncaster, whom he had trained so well in all manly sports, till there came over his heart a great and bitter longing for them all, so that his eyes filled with tears. Then he said aloud, Here I grow fat like a stall-fed ox, and all my manliness departeth from me while I become a sluggard and dolt. But I will arouse me and go back to mine own dear friends once more, and never will I leave them again till life doth leave my lips. So saying, he leaped from bed, for he hated his sluggishness now. When he came downstairs, he saw the steward standing near the pantry door, a great fat man with a huge bundle of keys hanging to his girdle. Then Little John said, Ho, Master Steward, a hungry man am I, for naught have I had for all this blessed morn. Therefore give me to eat. Then the steward looked grimly at him and rattled the keys in his girdle, for he hated little John, because he had found favor with the sheriff. So, Master Grinald Greenleaf, thou art an hungered, art thou? quoth he. But, fair youth, if thou livest long enough, thou wilt find that he who getteth overmuch sleep for an idle head goeth with an empty stomach. 
For what saith the old saw, Master Greenleaf? Is it not the late fowl findeth but ill faring? No, oh, thou great purse of fat, cried Little John. I ask thee not for fool's wisdom, but for bread and meat. Who art thou that thou shouldst deny me to eat? By Saint Dunstan, thou hadst best tell me where my breakfast is, if thou wouldst save broken bones. Thy breakfast, Master Fireblaze, is in the pantry, answered the steward. Then fetch it hither, cried Little John, who waxed angry by this time. Go and fetch it thine own self, quoth the steward. Am I thy slave to fetch and carry for thee? I say, go thou, bring it to me. I say, go thou, fetch it for thyself. Ay, Mary, that will I right quickly, quoth little John in a rage. And so saying, he strode to the pantry and tried to open the door, but found it locked, whereat the steward laughed and rattled his keys. I hope you're enjoying the stories. We sure are enjoying creating this for you. If you go and sign up on Patreon, you can listen without having to hear me talking in the intro and outro. For only $3 a month, you get the full chapters as soon as I have them edited and you have your own personal RSS feed with no interruptions. We just added a $1 option that provides early access and more. We also have an account with buymeacoffee.com if you want to support us that way. So check out our link tree in the show notes for all of the best ways to get in touch and support the show. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.